So I uh, decided I'd do a video on uh, interfacing uh, the Arduino to uh, Flight Sim. So this might be a bit of a long video, but I'll uh, try and keep it somewhat short. For anybody not familiar, that is the Arduino Uno board. Uh, it's an I.O. board. It allows uh, digital ins, digital outs, uh, analog ins, and pulse width modulated outputs along with serial data, all kinds of great things. Google them, check them out. Um, I'm guessing if you're watching this, you're probably already familiar with them. What I decided to do is I want to try and interface it with my, my Learjet, my flight sim. So uh, we'll take this Uno and we'll see if we can get it talking to flight sim. Um, here's unrelated. Uh, here's one of the uh, LCD touchscreen displays that I got. Um, one of the many modules you can add with that. There's one of my really basic Arduino kits. This thing, these things didn't cost much. Mostly, all I wanted them for is the jumpers and a couple other things. Uh, worthy of note, a very interesting item for flight sim use. These are a relay board uh, that can be run from uh, any Arduino. These things, four relays. They're good for what are they? Are they ten amp? Yeah, ten amp. That's one heck of a pile of current. A 10 amp relay board, they cost $5.54 with free shipping. I have tested them, they work great. They have LED indication of when the relays are active. They have the resistors on board, but they also, right next to those, you'll notice they have the spike suppression diodes as well, which you normally don't find. They get emitted on cheap junk. And then you, you can get inductive kicks that go back and damage the... Uh, damage the control board from the collapse of the field on the uh, on the control coil of the uh, of the relay so for five dollars and fifty four cents you can take these you can run stick shakers you can run whatever the heck you want big hydro items lighting fans all kinds of neat stuff so anyway that's not really related to getting it interfaced but it's just a really cool item I've seen for anybody watching this they probably purchased these boards um, from some other suppliers for a heck of a lot more money than that. So, uh, just a thought. Anyway, uh, let's move into uh, the computer side and get this moving. So first off, I'll mention that uh, the Uno board I showed at the beginning isn't the only option. There's actually the Mega 2560, which is supported in the software I'll, I'll show in a minute. Um, this thing has a heck of a lot more I.O. So you look here, 54 digital I.O., 14 PWM, 16 analog. So this is a really, really powerful board. And uh, for us Canadians, you're looking at about 30 bucks. So anyway, um, next I'll point out uh, this software that I'm about to show, I take no credit for. This is the website you want to go to. Um, initially, I wanted to interface with FSU IPC. I have yet to find a good method of doing that. Uh, right now, this is the best option besides programming your own Lewis scripts, etc. This is a, a turnkey solution from a gentleman named Jim. Uh, he's constantly doing updates right now. And uh, there are several options here to. Uh, to interface your Arduino with FSX. So we're going to try this one. Um, what we're going to use is this link to FSX, FS Multi for FSX. This program uh, on this page, you can download it here. Uh, it allows you to do several things and we'll just open up the program and take a spin through. Uh, on his website, it can be a little confusing. Uh, but overall, spend some time, surf around, and you'll find everything you need. So uh, here's the RAM. I don't think I can make this full screen, can I? No, it's maximized now. So uh, we'll start at the beginning. Communication settings, you set up your comms for your card. In my case, uh, serial port is column 5. This is the baud rate, and you just hit connect. Uh, right now it thinks I'm connected, but I'm not. Uh, going through, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to use Sim Connect. So, what it allows us to do with the Arduino, these are the Sim Connect 
outputs that he has made into the program. So he's taken these sim connect uh, outputs and by checking these boxes you can pump this data out to your Arduino which means you can write your own code to go along with it. So in the case of say you wanted a stick shaker here's your stall warning. Output this to the Arduino, write a very simple code to tell it if stall warning is active then activate my stick shaker and run it from your relay and those five dollar relay boards would work really good etc cetera, etc cetera. you get the idea some more on the extractions uh, lots of signals he's adding more all the time sim connect inputs this is the one we care about right now uh, these are the inputs that he has programmed that we can work with with these uh, these codes so there's a lot of them um, I think we'll just start with an easy one and we'll we'll do gear up and down and, and see if we can make it work with our Arduino. Uh, you can also do key inputs. This is a little different. I won't go into it here. Uh, you can read up on it. You can use this style and it, it's a little bit more straightforward because you can do it from right from within this program and you don't need to work with the Arduino code. Uh, some other nifty things uh, you can do uh, you can find all this on his website, but you can set enunciators. Uh, Sneaky Snuff isn't active yet. This one's really cool for anyone uh, using uh, PM Sounds or something else. I use PM Sounds and several other uh, audio callout programs in my Lear, but this one has some items like Glide Slope that I, I don't have. So I now have this active for my sim. This is a standalone, you don't have to have an Arduino. This will do everything PM Sounds will do uh, as a standalone program for you, and it's fully configurable. So check it out. It's uh, pretty cool. ATC chatter options, so you can use your chatter files and uh, uh, set it to play when you want, random, etc. All kinds of nifty stuff. The monitor. Uh, this is where we monitor the serial traffic from to and from the card, and we'll go into that and some PWM for meters, etc. You can do a lot with this program. So uh, we'll stop there. We'll have a look at the hardware again and we'll come back. So here's the Uno set up with just a, a breadboard and two tactile switches. Uh, I just stuck the wires in, no problem. Uh, we're on pins eight and nine and ground. So when either of these switches is pressed, we're gonna ground out that, uh, that digital input and that will uh, provide the information to uh, to the standalone program. So uh, we'll just jump back on the computer. There's not much to this. I'm just going to plug it into the USB and we'll see what we get. Okay, first off, uh, if I didn't show this already, this is the uh, web address for the mycockpit.org forum for Jim's program. Uh, any support you need, I would urge that you uh, do it here. The program can be confusing. Uh, just spend some time going through uh, the website and uh, give it a try. If you have any problems, post here. So, <clears throat> to take a step back, this is the download of the uh, of the program. Within it, you're going to find folders for uh, the wave files for the uh, uh, callouts, but all these are examples of the code. So we're going to go ahead and if you're not familiar with Arduino already uh, you're going to need to at least be able to do basic Arduino upload of code. So here's the, uh, we'll use the minimal code. Uh, you can double click on that once you have the Arduino program installed which you should already and it will open up the sketch. The sketch his sketches are really great. They're commented in extreme detail. Anything with the slash here, these are these are comments and tell you how to alter the code, what it's doing. Here's where he sets the pin modes to the outputs. So in this sketch, this one's already set up for what we want, uh, and a lot of things we're not going to use in this example. This is the area we care about right now. This is the pin assignments and what command to send back out to the program from the Arduino. So pins 8 and 9 are going to be CO1 and CO2. Sets gear handle up, sets gear handle down. Uh, I don't need to modify these right now because I just plugged those into those pins on my Arduino. Here's a comment. This is really important here. It tells you how to move forward with adding more lines. 
so you can customize these or add as many more as you need for your pin assignments it's just that simple um, the code for Arduino is actually pretty easy to understand once you dig into it a little bit uh, for basic stuff uh, like this it's plain text it's not too bad so um, we would hit verify to verify the sketch and upload but I've already done that so here we are with the program. I'm going to plug in my Arduino and I'm going to connect to it again. I should be connected. Uh, we'll go to the monitor. Uh, let's just go to card one and we'll see if it's communicating right now. There we go. That's me pressing buttons on the Arduino. We're getting inputs. We're actually getting a couple others from the code that uh, I don't need the CO1 and CO2 are the ones we care about. So that means the program is receiving the information from the Arduino. Uh, from this point, it's just that easy. The program already connects to edX automatically. FSX is open here. We'll unpause it. And gear up, gear down. Just that easy. We're interfaced with FSX and uh, it's working great. So um, from here, uh, there's all kinds of things you can do. So that's about it. Um, one last thing to mention, the monitor, you always want to stop this when you're not doing diagnostics so it doesn't clog up the communication. I haven't uh, done extensive testing on this. Uh, I haven't interfaced much on the, on the Lear with it yet, but I'm looking forward to being able to use it and uh, yeah any problems post in this forum but uh, it's pretty straightforward one thing worthy of note I may not have pointed it out earlier notice we were connected to card 1 but we have card 2 and card 3 as options so we can go up to 3 uh, Arduino boards plugged into this program if you're using Arduino Megas that's a very large amount of IO that you could uh, you can directly interface with uh, SimConnect or you could do a hybrid within your Arduino code. You could have internal logic that just affects the board and the I.O. on the board, kind of like interface IT, um, internal variables. Actually the same except uh, limitless functionality and you could do codependency on all different systems. So uh, say in the case you didn't want uh, your LEDs to light for enunciation of switches etc uh, unless the battery power was active you can go to the extractions and pump out the electrical master switch or bus voltage out to the Arduino by just checking the box then use this code to work with logic in the Arduino sketch so if master switch is off LEDs all off um, limitless possibilities incredibly powerful now um, again uh, I initially intended to interface with FSU IPC because that works well with other programs too like Jet45 who have their own non sim connect stuff but uh, at this stage uh, Jim's program here is a turnkey solution to get you moving especially on basic IO uh, should work good anyway hope this helps someone thanks for watching